sorry, how do you do? Look what I've picked up. Cyril, have you had bookmakers on this stage? It's not warm, it must have been dropped last night. Liberaches. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sunday night at the London Palladium. Hasn't been much in the news this week, has there? Apart from Lana's letters. <laughs> if only those letters had been written by Khrushchev and addressed to President Eisenhower. <laughs> Would have been much better world, wouldn't it? Well, did you see the girls? One of the girls, half of them are worrying about their sons doing their national service. But, uh, <laughs> makes a change to see a bunch of girls like that on television because I feel that these days we're getting too many medical shows, you know, Emergency Ward 10, then they transmit from the operating theatre of a hospital. You know, if, if this carries on much longer, next year you'll be able to get your TV licence on the National Health. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine if the Bre British Medical Association started running television? They'd have shows like the Burns and Abrasion Show. <laughs> I Love Leukemia. <laughs> Sunday Night at the London Clinic. <laughs> and any expectant mother that beats the clock gets to the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems television's affecting the doctors. My own doctor now, he's thrown away his stethoscope. He said nobody listens in. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure to introduce to you a fabulous act. Now, I think the name is Pinky. Is that a good start? That's not bad, and I haven't remembered it since rehearsal. I've been worrying about jokes. Anyway, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Pinky and Perky and Company. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
You know, I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I passed Sabrina's house the other day. You can tell her house got big bow windows. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> got a notice on the gate. No hawkers, no circulars, no carpenters. Uh, and... <laughs> What, what do you think of these film stars with the sleeping tablets? They're mad. Some of them should go and see their own films. I, I, I received, uh, received a letter from South Africa only yesterday from a Zulu chief I met there. Wrote to me and said, Dear Tomala. <laughs> At Zulu, he said, I saw Tommy Steele. I think your British native tribal dances are very savage. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you a young man from America. His ancestors were Cherokee Indians. The call boy hasn't given a knock at the door. We just sent a smoke signal. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, right at the top of the hip parade, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you making his first appearance on English TV, his first appearance on Sunday night at the London Palladium, Marvin Rainwater. The news is out all over town That you've been seen a running round I know that I should leave with them I just can't go Today I passed you on the street And my heart fell at your feet I can't help it if I'm still in love with you Somebody else was by your side And he looked so satisfied I can't help it if I'm still in love with you That's lost its maiden fly I'm alone and oh so blue tonight Like a piece of driftwood on the sea May you never be alone like me Thank you very much. That was a medley of songs written and recorded by our most beloved country singer, Hank Williams. And I want to return your hospitality by saying, Nagana Sid Shinabi O Gimao Yo Yo Oklahoma, which means anytime you're in America, come over and see me in Oklahoma. <laughs>
He's going to do a concert in Manchester. He's going to do about 30 minutes on the stage. It'll be the least rainwater they've had in Manchester for years. <laughs> See the BBC are building a television centre all above the ground. They won't have cellars in it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> someone I know you're going to enjoy. Stopping the show twice nightly here on the current bill at the London Palladium, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you for the first time, Sunday night at the London Palladium, Dick Sean. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the very first time I've had the pleasure of appearing on television here in London. I, I say it's a great honor. Back in the States, I've appeared on several of the shows. As you call them here, we call them the spectaculars. Everything is spectacular back in the United States. All the shows, spectacular this, spectacular that. As far as we're concerned, the entertainers, the only thing spectacular about television is the money, of which we don't get, fellas like myself. I mean, a Bob Hope, he gets spectacular money. He gets about 30,000 pounds a show. That's spectacular money. Bing Crosby gets about 50,000 pounds a show. That's spectacular money. But my money, sort of cute. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, but I see what's happening. The electronic age, television, airplanes, faster than sound, how can anyone relax? I heard of a new airplane so fast, it left California. Two rabbits got on the plane, they landed in New York, two rabbits got off. <laughs> they were brothers. <laughs> it's all speed, push, get ahead. I don't care who your best friend is. If you're sitting with him now, at home, in your living room, he's trying to outdo you some way. Everybody's trying to outdo each other. You tell your best friend, you make 13 pounds a week, he says, I make... 20 pounds. Tell him you pay five pounds rent a month. He'll say, I pay 10 pounds. Tell him you have a brand new Ford car. You just paid for it. You're very proud of it. I got a brand new Cadillac. Tell him you're in a terrible accident, a horrible, messy affair, and your car ran up a pole. And inevitably, they'll say, how far up the pole? <laughs> Speed, how can we relax? It's even affecting me. Ever since I got out of the service, I've had to earn a living, which is very unfortunate. <laughs> At such an early age, I shouldn't be out working. I should be out having fun. Such a young fellow, working for a living. <laughs> this is all wrong. How I ever got into show business, I'll never know. Maybe that's the reason. I didn't want to work. As a kid, I was always alone, shy, quiet. That was me. Very sensitive child. I used to sit in the corner for hours, all alone, quiet. I was an idiot. <laughs> I think I was alone too much Always alone And I developed a split personality Psychiatrists have a name for it They call it Schizophrenia Schizophrenia 
He's a happy little schizophrenic. Schizophrenia means a split personality, means two people within one. The constant struggle we all have within ourselves of the good, the bad, the weak and the strong discovered many years ago by those two famous psychiatrists, Sam Schizo and Joe Freeney. <laughs> and that's me, two people within one. On one side I'm very strong, oh so very strong, manly, muscular, a tower of strength. On the other side I'm very shy, quiet, don't touch me, I break in little pieces. <laughs> It's all my parents' fault. One of them was strong, manly, muscular, hairy. That was mother. <laughs> if only they left me alone as a kid. No, they kept pushing me all the time. Dad used to push me. He wanted a bright kid. Intellectually wanted. They gave me nothing but books as a child. Sitting in the corner hour after hour reading books. That was me as a kid. And when I was five years old, I knew all about geometry. This wasn't normal. Five years old. At Twelve, I knew all about nuclear fission all day long with those books. At 18, I was discussing atomic energy with people like Einstein. Now I'm 29. Get me abroad, will you? <laughs> I want to go overseas. <laughs> but I don't want to hang as long as I've got to wait for that laugh. <laughs> Everything, two people, half man, half animal. One side of me likes to sing ordinary songs, opera. Hey, love me, Besides an animal, like that fella Elvis, he moves around hot, hot. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> what am I going to do? The only happy days I recoil as a child. Recoil, that's a good one. Recall. As a recoil. Well, those I spent in college as an athlete. I went out for all the sports as a kid. I played everything. Sports like... Basketball. <laughs> Hockey. <laughs> but my favorite was boxing. Man, how I used to love to box all day long. I used to love to fight. I remember I was only about a kid, 18 years old, preparing for my intercollegiate championship bout. Just a kid, 18 years old, full of ideals and energy. And watching me work out was a rather fancy dress man. He watched me for a while, see, and he walks over to me and he says to me, Hiya, big boy! And I said, Hello, fancy dress man. <laughs> and he was fancily dressed, impeccably groomed. I've never seen a man with such a wardrobe. He had patent leather shoes, a shiny silk suit, Pleated white bosom, no shirt, just a pleated white bosom. <laughs> I'll never forget those words. He said, man, I'm going to make you the next heavyweight champ of the world. With my brain and your right hand, you're going to be the next heavyweight champ of the world. The other guy's been up there too long. They need new young blood. Yours. Yeah, did you say champ of the world? I was singing with Count Basie at the time, you see. <laughs> right then and there, I made up my mind. Why not me? Heavyweight champ of the world. I can see myself now, after a hundred fights, my face on the front page. <laughs> that means nothing. I'm just loosening up. Right then and there, the first person I thought of was my mother. Little mom scrubbing floors in that old gymnasium to send me through school just to make up enough pennies. And I looked down at her scrubbing away. And I said, S S That was her name. S S <laughs> was short for Sadie. I said, Mother, I'm going to be a fighter, Mother. I'm going to be the next heavyweight champ of the world. And she dressed man said I can make it. And I'm going to get you everything you ever wanted in life. Look at you, getting old and tired and gray. No more scrubbing for you, honey. I'm taking over now. I'm gonna be a fighter. And Mom would lift her little head up from the floor, say to me in that funny little way, I don't mind scrubbing for you, son, but you're all I got left. 
Fighting's not for you. That man's evil. You'll end up in the gutter like the rest of them. You'll never be a fighter. Not you, son. A fighter you'll never be. Never will you ever be a fighter. A fighter never you be will ever never be. Be fighter never you will ever never you fight be. Be a fighter you never. <laughs> yeah, but you don't understand, Mom. I'm doing it for you. How do you think I feel watching a scrub the floors? I mean, I tell you, your knuckles are raw. Let me get you some decent clothes. A home in the country. A Jaguar. A new pail. <laughs> Good show. Whatever that means. And Mom will lift her little head and say, Son, if that's the way it's going to be, that's the way it's going to be. Funny how life plays funny tricks. I work a whole lifetime, send you through school, and you leave leaving with him. I'm all alone now. Pop's gone. Sonny's gone. You're all I got left. But that's the way it goes. Unlucky me. Me unlucky. Luck on me. <laughs> Muck on luck. <laughs> muck on nook no. Don't muck on nook no me, ma. Muck on nook no you. I got a chance to be heavyweight champ of the world. I'll be there ready to deliver the heavyweight blow, and you'll stand up and yell, muck on nook no him. You don't know what you're talking about, ma. I got a right to, to be a big man. 18 years old, I can get everything I want. Lots of women, lots of parties, lots of money. What do you know about fighting? A fancy dress man knows I can fight. You've been scrubbing too long. Put up your dukes and I'll show you. <laughs> But Mom was yellow. <laughs> yeah, I could have beat her easy. <laughs> well, I went out and had my first fight. I beat a fellow named Sam Muckanuknu from Liverpool. <laughs> the local joke. I beat him, see? 500 bucks. I brought it home. I said, Mom, that's yours. That's your money. She picked up the money with a little tear in her eye, tapped me on the head, knocked me out cold. <laughs> When I came to, the fancy dressed man was standing over me and he said, Kid, I'm dropping you and signing her. <laughs> Maybe you've seen her fight on television. You'll be the new champ, Pete Rademacher. And that's how you see how I am, ladies and gentlemen. Now you see my problem. Two people within one, fighting with my own mother. What kind of a guy is this? Half man, half animal? Gotta hold myself together before it's too late. The muscles in my bones, I gotta concentrate. Today I'm two people, tomorrow maybe four, the next day eight, I may disintegrate. I gotta remember to concentrate. I gotta remember to keep a toe bone connected to my foot bone and the foot bone connected to my heel bone and the heel bone connected to my ankle bone, my ankle bone connected to my leg bone and the leg bone connected to my knee bone and knee bone connected to my thigh bone and thigh bone connected to my hip bone and the hip bone connected to my back bone and back bone connected to my shoulder bone and shoulder bone connected to my neck bone and the neck bone connected to my valuable price. I won't tell the rules and regulations, you know them. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, when you hear the bell go, that means jackpot time, and the jackpot this evening is worth 900 pounds. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our first contestants, we have Mr. and Mrs. Hopgood, who last week started off and didn't get very far. Do you remember? That's right, it is Mr. and Mrs. Hopgood and Angela. Come in the camera. That's it. Let everybody see you. Oh, that makes me look so pretty. <laughs> now, if you remember, Mrs. Hopgood, last week, I asked you to get these three cylinders and your husband to have them just between you and walk up the staircase. Remember? Well, now, we're going to start right from the beginning again. So what you learnt last week, you better turn facing the audience, because that's where they throw from over there, you see. Now, get them nicely settled, then you can put your hands behind your head. All set? Because you've got a full minute to beat the clock. I want you to walk up the staircase, land on the other side. If you drop the cylinders, you have to come back and start right from the beginning again. You've got 60 seconds to beat the clock. Hands behind your head. From now. You've been practicing. <laughs> I bet you've been running up and down stairs at home with a roll of lino. <laughs> you haven't put treacle on your stomach, Sammy. <laughs> oh, they've got it organized. It's marvelous what a week's rehearsal will do. <laughs> That's it, they made it! Now, that must have been very tiring for you, Mr. Hopgood, so I think you'd better have a rest. We'll bring a chair over for you to sit down. Here we've got a windscreen, a piece of glass. If you all sit in front of that piece of glass, you can look at the audience. And I'm going to ask you to put this crash helmet on. It's a crash helmet with a difference. It's got a little shelf on top. Now, is that nice and comfortable? Now, I'm going to place on top of that shelf a couple of paper cups. Now, you can look in the reflection and see how you're balancing them. Now, we want you, if you will, Mrs. Hopgood, to come over here, sit on this stool, and I'm going to give you some little revolvers. Each time you fire one, the young ladies will give you one that's loaded. Now, I want you to knock off one paper cup. That is the top one, so one has got to remain on the shelf. If you knock the bottom one off, the top one's got to remain on the shelf. <laughs> now, you've got 50 seconds, and all I want you to do is to fire the gun and knock off one paper cup. Are you set? You've got 50 seconds from now. Keep firing. How you doing, William Tell? That's it, she made it! Congratulations! Okay! You're finished. Now, if you'll come over here, Mrs. Hopgood, we come to our word game. If you get this, you get one of the major prizes. Stand on the first step, face the audience. Don't turn around until I tell you. Behind this curtain, there's a magnetic board. It's got a lot of words. They're all jumbled up. You've got to make a well-known phrase or sentence, and you have 30 seconds in which to beat the clock. Now, I'll open the blinds. Don't turn around till I tell you. Have a good look and don't start till I give you the word. Open the curtains, please. Have a good look and I'll give you the word because you've got 30 seconds from now. 30 seconds. Get moving. in the 11 plus, isn't it? Well, now, if you'll stand over here, take a look with me and see what you've won. <laughs> you've got a radiogram and a nice easy chair to sit on. Let your husband sit down and you sit on his lap. Congratulations. All the very best. Good luck to you. And now, Angela, who are our next contestants? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Heinsen from Darlington. Mr. and Mrs. Heinsen from Darlington. I see that Mr. Heinsen is a schoolmaster. Why, all right. What do you teach? Children. Children? Oh. <laughs> if you had to teach girls, I'd have the job myself. Well, anyway. Now, you come all the way from uh, where? Darlington. Darlington. From, Rome. from Rome. How are you? All right. That's the idea. Had any good sleeping tablets lately? <laughs> no, anyway. Now, for a start, Mr. Heinsen, you come over here and let your wife rest. Jackpot. Oh! <laughs> Now, this is a chance to win 900 pounds. How many lira is that? I'll ask the schoolmaster. How many, schoolmaster? You, you're likely to win a half a million lira. Shouldn't happen to my agent. Well, now, 
You find a hat to fit you? All right. Oh, I hope some of your kids are looking in. <laughs> yeah, I know, the Lord. When you get back to school, I say, oh, big head. <laughs> Mrs. Heinz, you've got to bounce these balls so that they bounce under the table, through the hole, and your husband catches them in his hat. Now, to give him a chance to catch them, you've got to bounce them very, very hard. And you, Mr. Heinsohn, you mustn't come past that line. If you do, you get three of the best. Now, I want you to catch three balls, one at a time in the hat, and place them in this net. When you've got three balls in the net, if you can do it under 40 seconds, 900 pounds or half a million lira is yours, and the best of Italian luck to you. Are you set? Then you've got 40 seconds from now. Away you go. Bounce them hard. That one didn't go through. That one didn't go through. They've got to go through the hole. That one didn't... No, neither did that one. That's... Yeah, but that wasn't hard enough. Just down in the middle. Very hard. That's it. Hard luck. No, that one didn't go through. Ah, oh, hard luck, Heinsohn Major. You've got to duck your nuts a bit for this. That's it! Hard luck. No, that one didn't go through. Yet, yeah. oh! Keep your eye on the ball. I'm sorry you didn't beat the clock, but it was a very good try. Now, for the next game, you take a rest, Mrs. Heinz, and we'll get back to where we were. I've got three inner tubes here. Now, the object of this game is that you take the balloon, when I give you the word, you pat it up in the air as high as you can get it, because whilst it's in the air, I want you to get into an inner tube, pull it right over your body, place it down on the floor, and then pat the balloon up again, do the same thing on the second and the third. Yeah. When you, you've got to keep it in the air with one big high pat each time. Now, to beat the clock, you've got 50 seconds, it's up to you. Start patting the balloon now! <laughs> well, start again. Up it goes, pat it. I wouldn't throw it. <laughs> Over, this one. Over here. Yes, he's down again, mother. Yeah, he made it. Oh. You have a rest now after that. And now, Mrs. Heinsohn, I don't know whether they play a game in Italy called Tip Cat. I know they play a game called Tip the Waiter, but now I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give you this stick. Now, you place one, we place one little stick down there for you, and you've got to hit it. Now, by hitting it like that, you hope that it goes into the basket. If you get two in the basket and do it under 50 seconds, then you enter the next round. Now, your husband won his. It's up to you to win yours. You've got 50 seconds from now. Well, you stop the clock, stop the clock. <laughs> Look. There's enough trouble in the world with Sputniks. Don't you start another one. Well, hold it. Look, Mr. and Mrs. Heinsohn, unfortunately the bell's gone. Is it possible for you to come back next week? Yes, it is. Come back next week and meanwhile practice. Ladies and gentlemen, the clock's beaten us. But next week the jackpot will be 1,000 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, well, here we are back again. That dashed along tonight. That beat the clock, didn't it? Marvellous how time flies. Only day I realised, you know, it's my wedding anniversary. Ten years ago today, I said, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. wasn't until today I realised what I do means. <laughs> I do the washing, I do the housework, I do the cleaning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you a young lady whose name is synonymous with hit tunes on records making her first appearance on television in this country, the fabulous Sarah Bourne. A secret, a secret, got a little secret. A secret, a secret, Secret kind of secret I'm aching for to shout it to every t 
daffodil and tell the world about it. In fact, I think I will. If this is his love, the whole world is crazy. If this isn't love, I'm daft as a daisy.
if he don't come back, then I'll never sigh or cry. I just must die. Fill my eyes 
somebody new.